Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday, October 26, 2021, regular selections meeting, a select board meeting. Excuse me. I'm going to take a while to get that, get that down and also uh, instead of BCTV, BCM. BCM, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, all of the uh, selectmen are here except for uh, Mark Pendergast, who uh, called in just a little while ago, said he was not going to be making it. And we have our town manager, our town clerk, and chair of the Envision Committee with us. Says, Please stand with me and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, before we move on with any more business, um, I want to take a moment and... Um, we learned of the passing of Eleanor Murphy this past week. Is um, Eleanor was very well known in town. Is she was a real fixture. Is for people that didn't know her very well. She grew up in town. She was a selectman. She served on the school board. She was in the state legislature for twenty years or more. Is um, she was not afraid to tell people what she thought, and she thought a lot. <laughs> is, um, is she was, I guess you could say she was my nemesis and also my mentor. Is when I first ran for uh, for uh, the House of Representatives, is uh, because Eleanor was term limited out, and so there was an open seat. And after I won, she told me, she said, Tom, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat a Republican, the people of Berwick are who you work for. Yeah, that's all that matters. And she was true to that word. Is um, We could be on different issues, on many different issues, different sides of it. And in the end, it was always what was best for the people of Berwick. Is the, when Mark and I got elected eight years ago now, was it? Seven and a half years ago, back to the board, is... She came down and made sure that we did our job and we did it the way she thought we should do it because it was the right way. You know, she had all that experience. So um, we're going to really miss Eleanor. As, um, I believe the uh, wake for her is this Thursday at the Bibba home on Cemetery Road. So as, uh, if you all just take a few minutes with me and have a moment of silence. Thank you. First order is the uh, approval of the meeting, meeting minutes from October 12th. I make a motion that we approve. Motion, well, we have a no, motion and a second. <laughs> um, any further discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is yes. Thank you. Uh, first public comment. We have no public comment coming. There's nobody called in. We have a public hearing approval for the November 2nd, 2021 town referendum election. I'll open that up. As, um, as we have everything has been in place, as we have nothing else to add to it is uh there has been no public comment that i know of is um and <clears throat> i don't believe we need to read through it again so is, um, if there is no more no public comment i will close the public hearing is uh that brings us to reports of committees is uh we have jeremy caston here with our Envision Berwick Committee. Welcome, Jeremy. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Not a lot to uh, report that's uh, big changes yet, although next Tuesday, uh, following the election or, or voting, 
I should say. Uh, we are having a lawn chairs meeting over Zoom, or, or I suppose if anybody wanted to go in person, James, you'll probably already be. Is James there? Is he I'm here. Yeah. So you may already be at town hall. So we will open it up for people if they want to do the conference room. We can talk about that. But um, starting to uh, think about really pushing forward on lawn chairs for next summer. So that's uh, that's some of the excitement. We also um, are starting to uh, look for sponsors for the Berwick Quarterly. We got our first sponsor for the uh, winter edition that'll cover December, January, February. So uh, Tanner Hergut, who has the, um, the two of the um, storage facilities and um, some exciting news about a new business he's bringing to uh, Berwick, uh, which we'll be announcing in the quarterly. Uh, he is the sponsor for the winter edition. We're, we're thrilled about that. And um, anybody who's panicking about uh, not getting Christmas gifts in time from those container ships, uh, we are printing a giant list of uh, Berwick makers. So made in Berwick products. And you'll be, I think, pretty amazed how much great stuff is, is getting made right here in this town that you can um, do all your shopping here, which I think is awesome. And that's kind of the broad uh, general stuff. we got a bunch of other important things going on, including the, the dig a hole committee, um, which is uh, making great headway and at the moment is uh, waiting on their uh, final report that you guys approved. So um, I think, James, you sent a draft of that this week. Is that right? That was, a, that was the first draft? Yeah, first, first draft of the playbook, which covers the 16 projects we've identified, uh, brief narrative and funding sources. And we actually met with Great Fellows Construction today for about two and a half hours. And I started at 1030 and before I knew it, it was 1.30 and uh, we talked. I know more about underground infrastructure than what I bargained for this morning, <laughs> but it was good. It was a good thorough overview of, of that. Um, we talked a little bit about drainage and some of the other stuff that I'll get into in my town manager report. So that's that's on a really good track, and um, we're in line to set out for those goals of aligning us for grant opportunities and phasing the projects along with the development horizon. So it's good. Um, that's uh, that's the broad broad sweeping news from Envision at the moment. We are uh, we are forging ahead on a bunch of other things. I'm trying to find a way to see if we can't get the swap shop reopened, uh, maybe on a um, partial basis. Uh, so many people have, have um, been vocal about wanting to get that back. And, uh, and so we're trying to work that out. And, and we've, uh, James uh, introduced me to um, uh, uh, this woman, Jessica, who works at Noble and is possibly able to furnish us with high school volunteers that would be able to man the swap shop on Tuesdays. So that's an option we're looking at. Uh, I've talked to Jody, um, waiting to set up a meeting with Robert and Jody and James. So that'd be a nice, you know, low hanging fruit project to, you know, keep, keep the good vibes flowing. And that's all from Envision for tonight. Any questions for Jeremy? No, if not, thank you, Jeremy. Well, here some Thanks, yeah, uh, no questions. Hey, have a good evening. Uh, Thanks, we have, Thanks, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have no department reports, no appointments. The unfinished business is uh, the contract for uh, Steve Eldridge to uh, consult with uh, James. Is uh, Maybe, James, you could uh, give us a brief update of... Uh, how often you've talked to Steve and yeah, right now we got a pretty good routine going of we talk every other week via Zoom um, for about an hour just to go over. Um, love to keep them in the loop with things, but it's good for for me just to make sure I'm on the right track and hey, this is what I did. It's kind of checking my work and giving me feedback and you know I always leave with a list of things where he's he said oh you should do this, make sure you do that. So it's been. Been really nice to 
keep up to date with them and, and kind of go over the gamut of, of what we're doing and he helps. Yeah, I think he's going to be a, a great resource, especially for, you know, like especially the first six, nine months. He's, he's a really great resource. Um, is uh, Linda, you've had concerns about that uh, six month cutoff. You know, is, uh, you want to address your concerns? Tell us exactly. You know, you, you've been concerned about, you know, who decides when it ends. It oh, like. that part. Uh, no, just um, as far as my, my concerns with Steve, I just thought the contract should be public and we vote on it. Um, but as far as the end of, of his six month um, probationary period, my question was, is that something that we decide at a meeting or what is the process for that? That's all. Oh, is it, we we never really discussed that. Is uh, right. Is is I I kind of assume that uh, you know after after a few months is uh, the need for James to be using that would just peter off anyway. So is in six months we should be done with uh, well, pretty close done to the budget. Is uh, right. <laughs> um, so that's a, a big part of it there. Um, is so that might just be a meeting with him and us during an executive session to sign off on the probationary period. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even know if it need to be in an executive session. Well, uh, uh, I'm I'm very much open to doing it in public if yeah, he so you so chooses. Know, it, 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 you know, it's a it's a public contract. You know, yep. it, it's you know, it's, it's um, I think the the daily fee is four hundred and fifty dollars. Is it four hundred and fifty dollars for a full full day? You're talking about which. Steve, so I'm talking about two different things. So I'm talking about his just overall six month um, probationary period where we, we put into James's contract. And then the contract with Steve is for six months as well. Right. Um, I think that's just a discussion with, with James, whether or not you know we can look at it, have a conversation with him. Where do you think you're at? Where do you not at? Do you want us to extend it or don't you? Do you find it useful? And do we file, if he's going to clear his six-month probation, which I have no reason to doubt you won't. Thank you. But then, then, then we can do that. But I just think that we should have a process in place to establish that. I mean, I think Steve will always be a mentor to you. I'm be quite honest with you. But he, he's probably watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> he probably is. is, um, is I, I talked to him last week, and uh, he, he, he has been following what we've been doing. So is he knows what's Good. going on. Um, and... Uh, so, um, how about Mike and Mike and Noah? You have any concerns, any comments of any kind? I have no concerns about the contract. Um, I mean, I I think it, what James is currently doing is exactly what we wanted, which is just you know checking in to make sure all the bases are covered, that all the little things that he wouldn't know about or he's being informed of. Um, you know, just like just being there to be like a sounding board for of experience, which is what we really need him to be. And and I think that the six months will cover most all situations. And like you said, I mean, right. I'm sure he'll be available if there's, you know, sudden not not emergencies, but a sudden sudden need arises for experience. I'm sure he'll be available for, you know, a couple hours in the future, you know, after if the contract expires or if we feel the need mm -hmm. to extend it. So I'm I'm comfortable with where things are at. Yeah, I mean, same by me. I mean, I don't I don't have anything other than a second, you know, Linda and, and Noah, and, and like you said, Tom. I, I think Steve's very vested in this in this town, even into his retirement. So um, I I don't think we'll have any issues if we ever needed to, you know, or if James ever had an issue to reach out to him. But but yeah, I, I think Linda is concerned. If I if I'm correct, is just making sure that it was discussed and it was out in the open. So everybody knew what, what was right. going on or what that option was for the public. So they, they can see what's there. You know? Right. Let's just make it public in that way. No one can accuse later of it not being public, but I don't have any problem per se with the contract at all. Is, uh, yeah. And as far as uh, the, the six months, both for Steve and James is uh, the James review, we will do an executive right. session. Okay. That's what I, I was, Getting yeah. confused with the two crossing over, well, but I have a feeling if, if, if we're not happy with James, the public might know it before <laughs> then. But <laughs> yeah, and I don't anticipate. I'm just saying the contract with Steve should just be public because it's part of yeah. his yeah, thing. Yeah, that's, yeah, all. that's no problem. 
is, uh, and, and basically is, um, you know, you've seen the contract is very, yeah. you know, very minimal, very straightforward, yeah. and um, <clears throat> is. Um, so he's only come. Steve's only come down one day, right? Come one day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as far as uh, your uh, your uh, biweekly chats, there is uh, um, has he has he charged us yet? I think this last one went over an hour, but uh -huh. I think most of them will be will range around a half hour to forty five minutes. Uh -huh. All right. Which the co contract says anything. The billing starts at an hour, over an hour. Yeah, so you could just hang up with them and tell them to call you back in five minutes, right? right? So you start a new hour? Yeah, instead of talking to them, you email them, right? <laughs> 59 minutes, bye. Yeah. So. And I, I actually think that's a good thing to, to point out, too, and I thought about it after, is, is just for everybody to know, like, that first hour, that's that's just Steve being Steve with James and James right. asking exactly. questions. That's not even anything that the town's paying for. That's even part of that. So, you know, and I'm sure a lot of those conversations are quick, quick check-ins, yeah. it seems like. No. I don't have any issue with like the rate or the sp that. I just think it should be publicly approved. Okay. Um, moving on to town manager's report. Okay, so I got um, some updated transfer station fees. The last time they were addressed, February 2012. Um, I will email that to the entire board. Uh, I have some paper copies here. Um, it shows the biggest change. There's a half load for for pickup truck. Um, goes from seven dollars to twenty dollars, and a full size from twelve to forty. That's the biggest change. The other change are pretty nominal or um, kind of marginal changes. You know, to reflect the actual cost of 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 trash disposal. So uh, this will be back on the agenda for November 9th, and I'll make sure that that's emailed, and you have plenty of time for review. And I'll ask. I'll, I'll check with Jody. Um, I've talked with him a few times about it. Uh, he's been evaluating what the regional transportations around us, our neighbors, are doing. So this is bringing them in line with what North Berwick, South Berwick uh, are doing. Right. And, and uh, like, just like to point out that you know, is uh, the town gets charged by the ton. So uh, this is actually you know making sure that the people that are disposing of things are paying you know their share of this. Is um, you know we we don't want you no know, people that don't use the dump to be you no know, subsidizing them. So this is you no know, just a, a more of a user fee, I would say, than anything else. And this is all specific to these categories. This doesn't really affect um, any just normal trash somebody brings in there. No, no household trash and recyclables. Uh, Perfect. No. 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 Everything's costing more. Yeah. Right. There'll be more on that next meeting. The next next one I have. This came across my desk today, and I'll try to explain this because it's actually it's pretty simple. Main PERS, it's our retirement benefit. Um, they recently, Maine State changed the law where they're allowing employees who did not choose to opt into the program. When you first join with the town, you have an option either to join or not join. And you have one, it's either you're in or you're out from the first, first day and then you're not allowed to join. But they recently changed their law to allow folks who opted not to join to join. So the motion for tonight would be to allow um, myself to sign an amendment agreement between any employer that would like to join the Maine Public Employees Retirement System, Maine PERS. Um, are there any questions on that? No, I know Most... I think most employees who are, were eligible um, are in it, and the folks that don't want to be in it are, you know, they're pretty strong with not being one wanting to be in it. So this may open an opportunity for one employee, but I think I think it's a good opportunity to offer a, a nice benefit for employees. So the motion is um, to adopt the revisions of five MRS subsection one eight two five dash C. Any other questions of Jay? Well, actually, actually, we need a motion in a second before we should discuss this. But I make a, I make, a, I'm aware of it. I make a motion that we approve uh, James's motion reference regarding the law change from Maine PERS. Yeah. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second that. All right. I'll Further discussion. That. Further discussion is um, um, 
So what happens, James, now with employees that don't join the PERS? How, how is that, how are the, uh, their retirement, their pension handled? It should also be noted that anyone who joins, like if you choose not to join Maine PERS, you don't have to join right. Maine PERS unless there's an ordinance in your municipality, which I don't know if the town is. But um, so if somebody, one key point is if somebody is given the opportunity now and joins it, they have to do it post-tax where before it's pre-tax. So that is a, a distinct difference in the, in the new law. So if you had an opportunity six years and you, signed, and you said, no, I'm not interested, and so you didn't contribute, but now you want to take advantage of this and enroll, it starts from the day you enrolled. You don't get the six years back, right. and you're coming up post-tax as a toast to pre-tax. So there is a difference for the employee. It just opens up the opportunity um, for them to maybe they maybe they became an employee and weren't sure if they were going to stay long term or not, right. and now they've decided they are going to. Here's an opportunity for them to enroll in the retirement system. Do I have this right? I might be talking out of turn, but I think for those who aren't in a main purse, they just have just tradition or this this normal. Okay. Right. If you're already in Maine PERS, nothing changes right. yeah. for you, and you're still pre-tax, and that's. And if you're a new employee, you would still be offered the same pre-tax opportunity. This is the law change is only to allow anybody who before did you know chose not to. It's another opportunity to jump on board, but it is post-tax. Now, I, I have no problem with it. You know, is is um, we we try to support our employees every mm -hmm. way we can. And, yep. um, this is just I mean, I, I think one of the underutilized things is people investing in their retirement. And I think any way to open up another another outlet for them that, that that's there. And like Linda said, how many people think they're just taking a job and don't want to get in and all of a sudden find themselves six, 12, 18 months down the road going, oh, look, I can make a career out of this and I missed an opportunity. So no, I, I think this is actually a good change in the law. Yep. And the same thing too is... Um, I think I agree with James. Most people who are interested in main PERS and the pension plan probably enrolled right from the beginning. So it's not going to affect a high number of employees. Right. And it's not going to change the rate that the municipality has right. to pay. Right. Even if, you know, so there's no change there. So, all right. Without any further discussion, I'll go through the roll. Is uh, Noah? He's on mute. Noah's Noah's on leave right now. Is is Linda? Yes. Is Mike? Yes. Uh, myself is yes, and Noah is abstaining as of this moment. <laughs> okay. So, all right. Anything else? Yeah, next, I, got, I got a few more things. The um, <laughs> James has got a list. An idea that Tom had based off of some discussions where um, we're trying to identify office space needs within the town hall. Um, different projects going on, different product needs. And I think a great idea would be to form a town hall building committee. We can include a, a, a select board member, Envision Berwick member, Legion, town hall staff, come together and, and look at what the needs are for the town hall. I mean, I think we need new windows. We need an elevator. We need... Um, Restrooms. Re bath yeah. Yes. Bathrooms, <laughs> yeah. That's one of my... Top yeah, right. I, I, I think I think restrooms is probably our next biggest one. I Unless think yeah, restrooms and ADA compliance with an elevator, yeah. Yeah, ADA compliance. And whether we do a full elevator or look at actually getting a lift that works 100% of the time. Yep. Ramps, things like that. Um, so I'll be in touch to gauge interest and in who wants to be, be part of that. Um, I would. If, you, if no one else is interested, I would be interested too. I, I, when I when I floated the the idea to James, I said that it'd be a good idea for a selectman on it, and I'd volunteer somebody else to do it. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you volunteered without me. <laughs> cool. that'll yeah. be a, that'll be a fun project. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next yeah. thing, and, and like uh, you know, just to to expand on that a little bit, you know, is um, with with think the way things have been changing around here is. We, we're talking about major changes with the rec department and, and doing different things. It just makes sense to, you know, instead of doing things piecemeal from now on, is right. to look at it and get a real plan about where we're going, what yeah. we need to do, and best utilizing the space. So. I think it's a great idea. Great idea. <clears throat> um, 
next topic, we hired a planner today, or we had someone accept the position. Nice. The toughest uh, decision I ever had to make in my town manager career. <laughs> All six weeks of it? <laughs> yeah. Seven weeks of it? We had se seven applicants, and we actually interviewed all seven, uh, myself and uh, Jen and Patty. Uh, it was a fantastic experience, and I was super impressed and encouraged by the talent that came through and the conversations we had. Um, so we hired uh, Tammy Bellman, and she comes with many years of municipal experience. She's been an admin assistant to both select board, planning board, zoning board. Um, she, she was at Alfred in Waterboro, so I'm sure she's worn a thousand different hats you know, in a small community. So she'll fit right in. She's worked with our contract planner from SMPDC for a couple years already. She has experience working with them. So she'll be able to come, be able to come right in and to, to, to pick up the ball for planning. So um, she starts in a couple of weeks, and I can't, I can't wait for that to start. Good. A note on Memorial Field expansion. The Cormiers, um, they've agreed to the site plan that civil consultants had designed for three acres. This we paid by impact fees. And I don't know if, if would this be the time where the board votes to authorize negotiating, or should I come back with kind of a... a um, tip, tip, typically, you'd come back with a finished product okay. you know, for yeah. us to look at, and uh, you know, then we can you know, you know, look at, at it and say you know, yes or no and, and uh, sign off it all in one shot. Okay, I'll get it. So. I'll get that teed up in, as soon as yep. possible. And then lastly, as a, um, 12 Sullivan Street, a.k.a. the L-shaped building, a.k.a. the building with the murals on it, that is starting in mid-November. Um, and what they have several tenants that are interested in the building, and they have a handful of tenants that already signed on to go in that building. Very good. Yeah. I, I, I noticed they, they put up a poll for their temporary construction power the other day, so I was very encouraged to see that. I was so, wondering what that was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a poll, poll for their temporary power so they can run power. Electricity, the yeah. I guess their plan is to, they're going to take all the brick, all the, the concrete block down, and they're going to replace the walls as they go. Is that oh, wow. that's even better. Better than I expected. So it'll be a whole new outside. Whole, whole, whole new sheathing ex of the exterior. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Wow. Because I, I was afraid they're going to try to save some of that block. And, oof. Yeah. I think by the time they had put the doors and the, the windows, windows and, and yeah, everything. Everything's, that, everything's out anyway, so... Yeah. Um, very good. Any any questions for James? If not, we'll move on. Well, um, what is their anticipated time frame with that? If they're going to start mid November, I think they. I mean, they. I know they want to have tenants in there as soon as possible. Is if they start if they're starting in November is uh, come springtime, they should be able to be start moving. No, because they they're going to be doing a lot of the work themselves, I'm sure. But they have they also have all their contractors. So they can potentially up. see people in there by by summer. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that would be great. Yep. Yeah. And then they'll roll right into phase. They have the project. They have phase. They have conceptualized about six different phases. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at doing phases one, two, and three as, or at least starting phases one, two, and three on the whole site, which right. is kind of the school street side to kind of get that side going. So they can nice. go right into that site work. That would be nice. That's great. All right. Thank you, James. Yep. Um, we have nothing under selectman communications. So bring us to our account payable. <coughs> we have payroll warrant number 23 for October 21st, 2021. <clears throat> amount of $68,956.06. We have an account payable warrant number 25 for October 26, 2021 for the amount of $380,663.03. <clears throat> and we have a payroll warrant number 24 for October 28, 
2021 for the amount of $69,780.58. I'll make a motion we pay our bills. Second it. Second. There's a Good. motion and a second. Without further discussion, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right. Patty handed me a whole packet of different papers here. <laughs> uh, municipal valuation data. Let's see. The municipal valuation return. Tom, you might want to use your notebook, your um, binder, and not the yellow folder because those aren't in any particular order. <laughs> but the binder is. All right. Thank you. Uh, new business number fourteen. All yep. right. <clears throat> so the municipal valuation return is submitted by the assessors to the Main Revenue Service Property Tax Division. Um, now, should Karen be involved in this? There's Karen now. Hi there. Hi there. As soon as I saw our assessor, I started looking for you. Here I am. All right. Can you explain some of this to us? Sure. Uh, this is an annual report uh, that is submitted to Maine Revenue Services. Um, it's the M it's uh, the MVR lists uh, the total assessments of local property, uh, collection of taxes, including land, building, personal property values, um, in addition to the value of each property classification. It's uh, 10 pages of a lot of information about the town for the tax commitment that just occurred um, in, in August. So it, the MVR provides a record of all the exemption categories in current use programs that are in effect in Berwick. Um, it also provides an overview of municipal tax records that are kept on file in the assessing office. Um, additionally, the completed MVR is used to determine the tree growth, homestead, and bedding reimbursements. And I just want to bring to your attention that on page one of the MVR, uh, the information there is provided to the state for the town's homestead exemption reimbursement claim. Um, the total exempt value for all homestead exemptions granted uh, includes a additional $2,600 that was omitted from the tax commitment um, committed and corrected with an abatement um, on nine, on September 14th. So I added that amount to the uh, reimbursement value so that the town will receive full reimbursement for all homes of exemptions granted. <coughs> the MVR must be signed um, by the assessor uh, of the municipalities and received by Maine Revenue Services no later than Monday, uh, November 1st. So we're coming right up on that, um, that deadline. So we hopefully we'll get that signed today and uh, I will get that to me. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me there. <coughs> Is, um, all right, um, so it's just basically the all the exemptions and what categories they are and everything. Is there any questions for Karen? If not, I'll accept the motion to uh, accept the municipal valuation return for 2021. So move. Uh, we have a motion. A second. I'll, I'll second it, but I have a question. All right. Any questions? Um, and just curiosity, James, you might know this. Um, on page three, it says open space, 553.04. Is that the same as what we heard from um, Ms. Fecto from the planning? Um, I thought it was different. It, it, what she was calling open space is different from what we consider open space. Okay. So, yeah, there is a difference. Okay. I think this would be, this is specifically the the current use program where there's open space farmland and tree growth got it okay where there's there's open there's open space from like subdivisions that, that are just the value zero because it's it can never be developed it's 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 conserved in perpetuity these can be taken out of that program for a penalty got it okay all right 
Okay. Any further questions? If not, I'll go through the roll. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right. That brings us to our amended tax commitment. All right. So this is an affidavit to correct the government record. And this is what you referenced before, Karen? Uh, it's in addition to, it's another, it's one more correction uh, to the commitment. We did the Homestead uh, reimbursement commit uh, correction with the abatement. And in this case here, um, we discovered that after the taxes were committed, but before tax bills were printed, um, one fully exempted homestead exemption was $200 more than what it should have been. And one homestead exemption that, that committed at fully exempt value um, should have been at $25,000. And that's the one that we abated. Um, the abatement corrects the commitment for the homestead exemption error. However, because the $200 correction for the fully exempt homestead exemption occurred after commitment, the commitment warrants must be corrected to reflect what was actually committed. And that's what we're doing here tonight. So we have the tax warrants to sign, um, just as you did at the time of commitment, um, to reflect this correction. Um, so the affidavit is, must be completed and kept with the commitment book. And I've prepared those documents for your review and approval signatures. Got it. Um, we have a motion to accept the affidavit to correct the government record for the tax commitment. I'll make a motion to uh, accept the recommendation to amend the uh, affidavit to correct the government record. There's, there's I'll second. <laughs> what was that, Karen? I was just going to say that uh, we're correcting the affidavit and also... Um, uh, accepting the tax warrants, the certificate warrants for commitment. I made my motion to add to accept the warrant, tax okay. warrant. All right, we have a motion. Linda, you didn't want to say that all over again? <laughs> no, <laughs> just not. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll still second. Sorry, I, was, I had to look up the right thing digitally to make sure I, had, I was reading the right one. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, I'll go through the rolls. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you. All right. Next we have a the town clerk request to close customer service for the November November 2nd election. And this is what we do every year now, as uh, so many of our clerks have used in the elections that it's easier for patty and everybody else just to close the office um, yeah I'll, I'll make a motion to close the customer service for for the november 2nd election a second it we have a motion and a second any discussion if not i'll go through the roll is noah yes linda yes mike yes and myself is a yes Tom, I do have a question, though. Um, Patty, do we post that, like, on the website that it's going to be closed ahead of time? Yes, we do. Okay. All right. Yeah, we yes, post it. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's on the door, too. And, you know, it'd we be, encourage be, people to come, come upstairs instead. Okay. And it'll be on the television and run on the, on the Facebook pages and everything, so. Okay, perfect. So. Thank you. All right. So we have no quick claim deeds, but we do have abatements and supplements. And Karen's back up again. Okay, here I am. All right, we have a few abatements tonight. Um, the first one is um, for personal property. Uh, this Great America Financial Corporation filed an abatement. Um, they brought to our attention that um, the depreciation for this particular copier um, was depreciated at 0.85 when it should have been uh, depreciated at 0.80. Uh, 
uh, resulting in an assessed value that is $320 greater than what it should have been. So as a result, it's recommended that the total assessed value be reduced by $320 from $14,046 to $13,654, and an abatement be granted in the amount of $7.17. Uh, there's the abatement form and calculation details that follow uh, the memo. Do you have any questions? Any questions for Karen? If not, I'm looking for a motion. Move that we approve. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A uh, second. Any discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. Next, Karen. Next one is an abatement um, that was uh, that is regarding a, a property. Um, it's a parcel uh, on Little River Road that includes uh, several uh, outbuildings and horse stables and um, out and outbuildings. Uh, due to a data entry error, the new owner as of March 31st, 2021 was not entered in the assessing database resulting in the wrong order being assessed for the fiscal year 21-22 uh, for the assessed value of $544,600. As a result, it's recommended that the abatement be granted in the amount of $9,966.18. And again, I have the abatement form that follows. Any questions? Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the abatement request for 85 Little River Road. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. Right. Next, Karen. Okay, this next um, uh, abatement request is uh, uh, a little bit different than uh, the previous abatements, where this request is coming from a property owner um, for the past two years, for fiscal year 2019, 20, and 2021. Um, and it's being uh, brought to you not as the assessor, but as the uh, municipal officers um, of the town. So. As the municipal officers, you may grant an abatement that you may feel um, uh, to correct um, a, you know, an error or illegality or irregularity in the assessment. Um, and that's according to the, uh, the state laws. So just a little background about this property. Uh, the subject is a vacant 5.4 acre parcel on Ridland Road. Um, the property owner called the assessing office um, this spring to inform us that the higher assessment for the past two years, meaning fiscal year 2019-20 and 2021, um, the, we researched the property and it was determined that during the revaluation in 2019, it was thought that this parcel could be built upon. However, it cannot without improvements to the road or to the bridge. The cost of such improvements are so great that the building on this lot, uh, the building on this lot is not feasible. So as a result, the parcel should have been assessed like other parcels that have the potential to be built upon if certain site or road improvements are completed. So when we learned about this in this spring, we corrected the uh, assessment by reducing, uh, by reducing it by $41,100 dollars from $74,300 to $33,200 for the fiscal year 21-22. So again, we, we made that correction as we, as we did um, for this year. When the new assessed values were mailed to all property owners in July um, as part of the revaluation in 2019, the owner did not schedule or attend a hearing to discuss the assessment. And with regards to the uh, fiscal year 2019-20 and the 2021 uh, assessments, the property owner 
uh, failed to notify assessing in writing of the inequitable assessment within 185 days from the date of commitment, which is required um, by the state law. So property owners have that time frame to file and uh, they did not do so. So the assessor cannot uh, abate because the deadline to file an abatement for both years has passed, um, but it is, and it is more than one year from the date of commitment for the assessors to act on their own initiative. So on September 23rd, uh, the assessing office received from the property owner a written request to the municipal officers to grant an abatement for the fiscal years 2019-20 and 2021 which is within the acceptable three years from the date of commitment time period for the municipal office to make such reasonable abatement as they consider proper to correct any illegality, error, or irregularity in the assessment. And that's uh, I cite the law pursuant uh, Title 36, Section 841, um, Paragraph 1. So for fiscal year 2019-20, if the parcel were assessed like other similar properties, the assessed value would have been reduced by $41,100 from $74,300 to $33,200. And the taxes would have been reduced by $720.48. And that is the abatement amount that is being requested by the owners. And for the second year, the fiscal year 2021, if the parcel were assessed like other similar properties, the assessed value would have been reduced by $41,100 from $74,300 to $33,200. And the taxes would have been reduced by $795.70. And again, that's the abatement amount requested. The property owner did also file um, their own written um, letter to you as the municipal officers, and that's in your packet, um, explaining their um, sort of their side of of their of their request, and that uh, summarizes much of what I uh, did. Is that I explained? Are there any questions? So, yeah, I have a question. So, if I'm understanding this is correctly, is the time has expired? They had an opportunity two years in a row to question this and fail to do so. And now they want us to go back. That is correct. And devalued the property and what are our obligations? Can you explain that last part? You said that, that they're within the three year. Yeah, so, so you do have the opportunity and it's, it's the key word is to, it's uh, to make, you can make such reasonable abatements um, as you feel, you know, as as uh, from the date of commitment, um, you can make this abatement. However, you would be might, you may be setting a precedent for property owners to continually come year after the time period. So that um, in the past, um, this that was just that was not typically accepted by the municipal officers to set a precedent um, for uh, property owners to to request back um, abatements that is beyond the 185 days or the one year from the date of commitment. So they had their opportunity to file, um, but they're pleading their case to you as the municipal officers. And they didn't give any other reason other than this letter as to why they didn't appeal the first year or the second year when they had the opportunity. Right, that is, that is correct. I can't hear. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Karen, is it safe to assume that they were notified of, of the taxing changes, right? Like they paid their tax bill in 2019 and 2020? That is correct. Yeah, because I'm reading their letter now, and I mean, I mean, I, I feel like it's on them. I mean, I, I'm kind of in the same situation because if notification was sent and they had an opportunity for a meeting, I remember getting it in mind. If you have any questions or you want to have a, a, a hearing, you're welcome to attend. Um, when the new assessments came out, there were several set up here at the town hall. Correct? Can can I can I interrupt just for a minute? Um, is I see uh, I see on the television screen we have somebody there with a black thing that just says Paul. Is that Paul trying to get in? Is that the Paul that's trying to? 
No, we have Paul Adams as a trustee. Okay, yeah, he, I did make him aware of tonight's meeting and, and uh, let him know that he could participate in the meeting if he so chose. Is, uh, Does he have something it, he wants it, to it, say? It, 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 there's, a, there's a blank up there with Paul and an X, but there's no face, so is, I'm assuming Paul checked in and has checked out, maybe. Um, I'll, I'll give a little bit of history, as, as Karen said, is we tend not to allow these because once we start doing this, anybody can come in and go back for two years and contest their assessment. Yeah. And that's going to just keep bringing them back to us and bringing them back to us. And, you know, it's very clear that they, they, they knew about the assessment. They paid their taxes as it was. So um, I... I, I, I don't feel as if, you know, the town should, you know, change our policy, which has been all along, to to not do this. So. No, and, and I'm in agreement, and, and, yeah. and I think that's, I think that puts really a slippery slope, and it's not that this is forgotten land or something's been out there and they've missed payments. They've clearly received notification and have paid it as this is right. what's what's going on, so... I, I think we're outside that scope, unfortunately. Not that I, you know, want to We've tell somebody no, it's not you know, it. But <laughs> in previous right. pretty previous issues, you know, it's on the landowner to yeah. make sure that everything's correct and that you know, I mean, mistakes will happen, but it's on the landowner to make sure that they are correct in the end. And if they discover after years it's been wrong, that's not on the town to. To, to deal with that's for, for them to deal with and it's it's unfortunate but it's the precedent that we have to set or we're going to be dealing with this for every I, I agree. piece of property for decades yeah i mean they had an opportunity they had a a year's window after each assessment to appeal and they paid their taxes so they knew what the new rate was i i agree i don't i don't see to do this All right um, and just just as uh, a little bit of history is, I, I have a friend who lives in Berwick here, and after oh twenty or so years, he discovered that he had been paying the property taxes for a barn next to his property, and you know again it was on him. He's for more than twenty years he'd been paying the property tax. He should have been checking it. But, yeah. So, um, so is I was looking for a motion. So either accept or deny. I'll make a motion that we deny the request. Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Uh, yes to denying the request. And I myself as a yes. All right. And one more, Karen? We have one more, and this is um, a supplement. So earlier, um, I brought to you the abatement uh, for the property at 85 Little River Road. Uh, this is now the supplement um, that corresponds to it. The subject, uh, again, is a was a parcel uh, with several outbuildings um, on it. And due to a data enter error, the new owner as of March 31st, 2021 was not entered into the assessing database resulting in the wrong owner being assessed for the fiscal year uh, in the amount of $544,600. The owner of 85 Little River Road as of April 1st, 2021 is Ludwig Family Farms, LLC, per deed book 18621, page 782, as recorded in the York County Registry of Deeds. Therefore, it is recommended that a, a supplemental tax for the fiscal year 2122 be issued to Ludwig Family Farms, LLC, in the amount of $9,966.18. Any questions? That sounds like an error. i make the motion to accept the supplement. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, I will go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Yep. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Yeah. 
All right. Um, second public comment is uh, we have no comment. We do have an executive session. Is um, is uh, the consultation with the code enforcement officer? But before we get into that, is uh, did anybody else have anything to bring up? Any other business or non agenda items? This is our last meeting before the uh, election that we're having in like a week. Yep. So, you know, go out and vote. Yep. Please don't complain that nobody told you there was an election. Please don't complain that you didn't get enough notice. We've been talking about it for five months. Please go out and vote. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Anything else? All right, we'll be going into executive session. We will not be taking any definitive action. We will not be voting on anything. Um, so is, uh, when we come back, we will uh, be finished. So under Title I, subsection 405-6H, under consultation with a code enforcement officer, I will make a motion that we enter executive session. Second. We have a second. I'll go through the roll. Noah? Yes. Linda? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. All right, give us a few minutes to uh, shut all the things down and get things going, and uh, we'll be right back.